Okay, section 8.6, singular value decomposition and generalized eigenvectors. Okay, we have learned uh, that the symmetric matrices are diagonalizable. We now extend it uh, to the concept of, uh, the, we now extend this concept of diagonalization to n by n matrices, uh, not necessarily square nor symmetric. Okay, resulting in a matrix decomposition, mm -hmm. which is a singular value decomposition. And study pseudo inverse and least square solutions using this singular value decomposition. First theorem, singular value decomposition. Let A be a, a M by N real matrix, then there exists orthogonal matrix is U of order N and orthogonal matrix V of order N, and M by N matrix sigma such that, like this. You transpose a V is a matrix, rectangular matrix sigma, where this uh, sub-matrix sigma 1 is a diagonal matrix, and the main diagonal of this sigma 1 are all positive and listed in the monotonically decreasing order. And these three zeros are zero matrices. Okay? That means if we multiply U, U on the left and V on the right, then uh, since uh, this U and V are orthogonal matrices, A can be written in this way. because. Uh, uh, U, U, U transpose is an identity and V times V transpose is an identity matrix. So this A matrix can be written in this way. If we think, if we write this matrix U as a column vectors like this and uh, this v, uh, v matrix is uh, uh, it formed the row vectors of VI transposes like this. And this uh, sigma is, this is, a, this is a sigma 1 and these are zero matrices. And the main diagonal entries of this uh, sigma 1, this matrix sigma 1, so are uh, sigma i's in the decreasing orders like this. Okay. This, is the, this is the shape of the singular value decomposition. It always does exist. We can always write this matrix A with two orthogonal matrices U and V and a sigma matrix like this where this sub-matrix sigma 1 looks like this. This is the whole idea. Here, uh, this equation, one is called the singular value decomposition, SVD of A. This, uh, this, uh, this form is called the singular value decomposition. And the main diagonal entries of sigma are called the singular values of A. The sigma i's, the sigma i's, and the zeros. These are all singular values. Sigma 1 to sigma k and, uh, and the zeros. They, those are called the singular values of A. And the column, column vectors of U are called the left a singular vectors of A, this uh, column vectors, UIs, UIs are called uh, the left singular vector because uh, U is on the left, U is in the left side, and uh, the columns of V is called uh, are called the right singular vector of A. These columns of V are called the right singular uh, vectors <coughs> of A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the following theorem shows that matrix U and V are orthogonal matrix. This is diagonalizing A, A transpose and A transpose A respectively. See the theorem. <coughs> Let the decomposition A, uh, which is uh, U sigma V transpose, uh, as you saw, we saw in the singular value decomposition of M by M matrix A, where sigma is a positive diagonal entries of sigma. Then, V 
V transpose times A transpose A V look, should be looks like this. And V transpose times A A transpose U is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries looks like this. This is M by N matrix and this is M by N matrix. Because this is a, this is M by this is a, uh, a transpose A is a M by N, a N by uh, uh, this is a N by N matrix and this is a, uh, a A transpose is a M by N matrix and the size of the U matrix are N by M by N so the, all those are going to be M by N and N by N for V's. Okay, here here is the proof. So this is so so nice, isn't it? A transpose is a, uh, is a, is a diagonal is, a, is what orthogonally diagonalizable because uh, A transpose A is a symmetric rectangle, a symmetric square matrix, and A, A transpose is a M by N square matrix, which is, a, so is a symmetric. So it is uh, diagonalizable, and uh, it is diagonal matrix like this because the eigenvalues of A A transpose are this and eigenvalues of A transpose A is like this. Okay, here is the proof. Let A is equal to U uh, sigma V transpose. Then uh, sigma can be written as a U transpose A V. And now consider sigma transpose sigma and sigma sigma transpose. Then what is this? Okay, then V uh, then uh, V transpose times A transpose A V is, should be uh -huh. uh, what? Should be what? Uh, some uh, some diagonal matrix sigma prime. Uh, yeah, some uh, some uh, some generalized diagonal matrix sigma prime and whose diagonal? Oh no, sigma the A transpose A. This is a n by n matrix. So sigma prime is a uh, n by n diagonal matrix whose uh, diagonal entries are whose diagonal entries are the eigenvalues of A transpose A, which is uh, sigma I squares, including the square of zeros. And eigenvalues of A transpose A A transpose are uh, this, and uh, it is a symmetric matrix, and it is also diagonalizable. Uh, so we have we have U transpose A A transpose U is a uh, uh, diagonal matrix whose main diagonal entries are the eigenvalues, including zeros. Okay. So it, it, it comes just uh, uh, directly uh, from, uh, from this and the, the earlier theorems in the section 8.5. Okay. So from here we see, yeah, we see many things. For the symmetric matrix, which is uh, orthogonally uh, diagonalizable. Okay, one first example. Let's 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 do find the singular value decomposition of this matrix. Then what are you gonna do? We just multiply a transpose uh, uh, on a. Uh, then we have a we, we have what? We have a symmetric two byte square matrix like this, whose eigenvalues are this, and then the singular values of a are square root of this. Singular values are here. The, these are sigma i is a singular values, and uh, and what we have was on here. These are the eigenvalues of a transpose a and a a transpose, and eigenvalues are exactly same, uh, except the number of it. Mm -hmm. The only difference is uh, uh, the number of zeros in the set of eigenvalues on this both the, the, these two uh, different uh, the matrix of two different sizes. Okay, anyway, so we find A transpose A, then find the eigenvalues, then take a square root. Then we have singular values of A, which is 3 and 1. Okay? Mm -hmm. then, uh, then next, find the eigenvector of A transpose A, mm -hmm. corresponding uh, this singular value I, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, the eigenvalue of A transpose A uh, 
first one, lambda 1, is equal, uh, which is 9. Then we can find the unit eigenvector, which is V1. And we can also find the unique eigenvector, uh, unit eigenvector of A transpose A corresponding to lambda 2 is equal to 1, which is this. Then these two are uh, the also normal uh, vectors, uh, also normal eigenvectors corresponding to A transpose A. So we form a matrix, we form a matrix uh, U with this V1 and V2. So we now have a matrix U here. And do the, similar, the same thing for the A transpose A. Find the uh, eigenvalue of A, A transpose, take a square root of it, which is the same as uh, 3 and 1, and, and find in the corresponding uh, eigenvector uh, uh, that's at, uh, on, on, of A, A transpose, and which is, uh, for, each, for each eigenvalue, so 9 and 1 then we can find the u1, u2 uh, that forms a matrix u like this. Then now we have a sigma matrix and the matrix, also real orthogonal matrix u and v. So we can write the matrix A as a uh, product of the matrix is u and sigma and v transpose, which is like this. Here is, this is A matrix, this is a sigma a matrix, and this is U, and this is V transpose, V transpose here. So the matrix A was written as what? Unitary matrix, the real orthogonal matrix times a diagonal matrix times the transpose of the uh, real orthogonal matrix V. So we have a singular value decomposition of the matrix A. This can be done uh, by the code here. From the given A, we can find the eigenvalues of A transpose A and, eigen, and square root of it, which is a singular value. So find the matrix and the form of matrix A, A transpose, and, find, and from there we find the eigenvectors corresponding to this, which are, which are these two. And uh, from there we, we form a, uh, the we form a matrix. Uh, 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 we form a matrix V. Uh, we form a matrix V, uh, whose columns are this and this, and uh, find and find the transpose of it, and do the normal to, uh, to normalize these two vectors. So we have a matrix, real orthogonal matrix V like this. Do the same thing for the A, A transpose. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then. Uh, uh, normalize these two vectors and uh, form a matrix U uh, whose columns are normalized by vectors of these two, which is uh, this, like this. So now we have U and V, and the diagonal matrix is uh, just a diagonal matrix whose entries are what? Square root of eigenvalue of A, a transpose or A transpose A, which is uh, three and ones. So this matrix A can be written in this way, which is this. We can check it. If we multiply u and the sigma and v transpose, then you ha we have the uh, matrix uh, like this, uh, which was given in the, which was, which what we already, what we had. So matrix, now the matrix A is a product of a unitary matrix u times uh, a diagonal matrix uh, sigma times uh, the transpose of uh, an orthogonal matrix v, which is this. U V U V and uh, Sigma. That's what we have. So you can you can check all this in in here. And also this can be done in here. If you have two by two matrix like this, then this is a kind of a, a randomly generated two by two matrices. From here you can check what the singular value decomposition of this matrix, which is a Unitary matrix times a diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are singular value, which is the square root, positive square root of A, A transpose and the transpose of the uh, right eigenvectors of A, A transpose, A, A transpose A. That's, that's it. So you can, you can do so. 
Okay, the, the, uh, that's the tool that I made, so you could use in this web address. Okay, here, next theorem, equivalent statement. Let A be an uh, M by M matrix and A is a non-singular matrix, then uh, if and only if the every singular matrix, uh, singular values of A is non-zero. If it's a non-singular matrix, every singular values are non-zero. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, this is, this comes, this comes easily uh, from the fact that uh, the, the matrix diagonalization that we have seen in here, seen in here, from here. You see? The proof is here. That what's, what is the determinant of A when it is a square matrix? Then, if, if it's a square matrix, then everything is a square matrix is here. And determinant of A, a is the same as determinant of U, which is 1, because it's a real orthogonal matrix. And determinant of sigma, which is the product of these, and uh, times uh, the determinant of V transpose, which is 1. So determinant of A is, if determinant of A is not 0, then means uh, there is no this part. So you, you only have sigma i's uh, are all positive. Isn't it? So all the singular values should be positive if A is a uh, n by n non-singular matrix. That's the proof of this. Okay? That's what it shows. Next theorem, 8.6.4. Suppose sigma i's are uh, located in the decreasing orders and they are singular values of n by n matrix A, then the matrix can be expressed as follows, like this. A can be written as a singular, uh, the summation of the singular value times uh, the jth column of uh, the, matrix, or the orthogonal matrix U times the transpose of the jth column of uh, the orthogonal matrix V. This is called the a length one decomposition because uh, you saw this, uh, this, uh, this, ma this, this matrix, uh, this uh, n, uh, this what, uh, n by one vector times uh, the uh, n by m vectors uh, is, for, is will form a m by n by m matrix, m by m uh, m by n matrix, which is uh, length one. So this, what this says is, uh, this is a rank one matrix for each j. The scalar multiple uh, does not change the rank. So this, is, this uh, each of these terms are the one, uh, the what, m by n rank one matrix. This is a, this is a what, summation of those rank one matrices, rank one matrices. So uh, with, uh, the, with the singular value decomposition, you, we can write. Uh, we can write a matrix as a summation of length one matrix thesis. Okay? This is, uh, this is it. And how many terms? That's only the terms that the number of non uh, positive singular values. That's the, this, uh, this, uh, the, the A can be written as uh, the linear combination of these matrix thesis, uh, the number of, uh, same as the number of uh, singular, non-zero, uh, positive, uh, singular values. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it's a singular values, it is a, all no, it's a positive numbers. Okay, this is called the length one decomposition. Note, the, seed, the pseudo inverse of a matrix is important in the study of the least square solution for optimization problems. Now we study the pseudo inverse. Suppose we have a n by n uh, non-singular matrix A using the singular value decomposition, then A can be written as uh, U sigma V transpose, and this all this U sigma V is a n by n non-singular matrix, if A is a non-singular matrix, and U V is a uh, real orthogonal matrix. Then what's the inverse of A? The inverse of A can be written as the inverse of this, which is uh, V transpose is equal to V inverse. So the V transpose transpose is going to be, the inverse of this is going to be written in this way. Because U and V are real orthogonal matrix and sigma is a diagonal matrix. Okay? So this can be written in this way. So V inverse can be easily found if you have a singular value decomposition. 
for non-singular matrix A. Second, if, if A is not a square matrix or a singular matrix, then what happens? Then, the, uh, then A cannot, uh, the, uh, the A does not, the, uh, this, uh, this the, uh, we do not have A inverse. So A, A inverse uh, cannot be found. So we cannot have this form. However, we can construct a pseudo inverse. Not exactly an inverse, but it's a kind of generalized inverse, which is A dagger. We read this uh, as A dagger. Okay, pseudo inverse of A. By putting the sigma in here into the form like this, where uh, the submatrix sigma one is a non is a is a non singular submatrix like this. Okay, pseudo inverse. We're gonna use we're gonna we're gonna generalize this concept to a uh, pseudo inverse of A by using the Sigma one and sigma the inverse of sigma one. How? This is the idea. For an n by n matrix A, the n by n matrix A dagger, which is defined as this, sigma A dagger is equal to V times sigma prime times U transpose. This is called the pseudo inverse of A. When uh, v and u are also a matrix in the singular value decomposition of A, and sigma prime is looks like this, where sigma uh, one is a unimportable matrix, isn't it? If we have a singular value decomposition, then we can always define a dagger with it. Okay. So if you do, if you can find the singular value decomposition by using it, you can find the pseudo inverse of the matrix A, even though a given matrix is not a singular matrix, not non, is, is not a singular matrix. If it is a singular matrix, and it, it is the general rectangular matrix, even though the rectangular matrix, which is not, which is singular, which can be singular, you can always find the pseudo inverse for any size of any matrix. You can find the pseudo inverse. This a dag this is called the a dagger, and if it's a is a zero matrix, then a dagger is a zero matrix, and size is a n by n instead of n m by n. So a dagger is a n by n matrix. Okay, eh, next truncated singular value decomposition. What is a truncated singular value decomposition? We learned the least square a singular value decomposition for any uh, matrix A. So that A can be written in this way. Okay, let's take a closer look at the at the matrix S here. Okay, here, remember S can be written in this way, and this is a diagonal matrix where sigma uh, one can be written in this way, and this here this uh, this is a non-singular matrix. Uh, okay, because sigma singular values are all positive. Does, uh, okay, this uh, okay, this sigma is a singular values of A. So we have everything uh, here, uh, U and V and uh, S, uh, whose sub matrix is sigma one, which is non-singular. Now, a length, a full length decomposition of A is usually denoted by uh, A sub R, which is uh, U R times uh, U sub R times sigma one, sigma sub one times uh, the transpose of V sub R like this. If the if uh, where U R, U R and V R are matrices obtained by taking the first R columns of U and V respectively, we can find K length approximation or two A by taking only the first K large, largest singular values and the first K columns of U and V. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, what this means is uh, if we have how many? R non-zero singular values, which means the length of uh, this matrix is R because it has only uh, R non-zero eigenvalues. Okay. Then, a, 
are can be written in this way. Here, this uh, AR, the size, uh, the the num uh, number of uh, here the here um, uh, here. Okay, this is a K rank approximation. This, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this is called uh, this, uh, so this is called the K rank approximation or truncated singular value decomposition. We now only deals with the known uh, the linear independent columns of A. We only take care of the linear independent columns of K. This is the, this example shows what I wanted to say. Find the pseudo inverse of a matrix A. This is a three by two matrix. But how many linear independent columns it has? It's a two linear independent columns. Okay, so at least it has a full column length, two. Okay. This so we can first uh, compute the truncated singular value decomposition of A. If A is like this, yes, A is like this, we can find the singular value of this matrix, which is this. Uh, and so we can form a uh, diagonal matrix, and we can find the, the eigenvalues of a trans a, a transpose, and, and uh, eigenvalues of a, a, a transpose a's, and normalize it to find the matrix U and V. You can use this uh, matrix uh, calculator that I uh, showed you. From here, you have U N sigma and uh, uh, V transpose. Here, from here, with using it, a dagger can be written as uh, v times the inverse of this times the trans of, transpose of this earlier part, like this. That gives us this, which is exactly this form that you had. A here, but you have this form, v sigma prime. U transpose. This is what you have. <coughs> v sigma inver inverse of sigma prime, which is the inverse of this uh, so matrix, and uh, the transpose of uh, the matrix U here, which is this. This is uh, what? Generalized inverse of, uh, the pseudo inverse of A, A dagger, which is a two by three matrix like this. Okay? You can, uh, you can uh, see some more here. The definition can be found here and explanation. Yeah, we can randomly generate uh, the generalized matrix and what is the A dagger of it? What's the dagger? Here, the same matrix here. So we can we can do compute. Uh, you can compute to it, and uh, you can compute. Uh, you, we have to submit something. One. Then you will see. This is not correct. The real answer is uh, like this, which is uh, this. This is, uh, this is the pseudo inverse of A from the computation that you find. Okay, anyway, yeah, this, this, so this, this, this is only two by two matrix, so you can easily do it by hand, uh, but the same thing can be done for any size of M by N matrix. Okay, this is the command that I used uh, for the tool that I just showed you. Okay, anyway, if A has a, this M by M matrix A has a length N, then we say it, uh, if the length of A is the same as the number of columns N, then we call A has a full column length. If the length of A is equal to M, then we say A has a full row length. Mm -hmm. okay. The important thing on the, this column, full column length is if we, A has a full column length, a transpose A is always a, non, a always non a non singular matrix. Okay, this is this is a very important part. If A has a full column length, A transpose A is non singular, so we can easily find the inverse of A transpose A. Next, if A is a non singular matrix, the pseudo inverse of A is exactly the same as A inverse. For that non-singular matrix, okay. If it's a single non-singular matrix, you can find the inverse. You can also find the pseudo inverse, and they should be same for the non-singular matrix. Here is the answer. If here is the next theorem. 
if m by m matrix A has a full column length, then pseudo inverse of A can be written in this way. If it has a full column length, then A dagger can be written in this way. How? Let A is equal to U sigma V transpose be a singular value of A, then sigma can be written in this way because it has a full column length, and sigma 1 is a non-singular matrix. Then A transpose A can be written as what? A transpose times A here, and U transpose U, U, U and cancelled, so we have only this. So A transpose of A can be written as this. Since A has a full column length, so this A transpose is non-singular, so and the matrix V is N by an orthogonal matrix, N by an orthogonal matrix, orthogonal matrix. hence A the inverse of A transpose A is just the inverse of this, which is this, isn't it? Inverse of this can be easily find of this here. Because the sigma one is a non-singular matrix. Here, this is this is whole idea. So if we multiply A transpose on here, what is gonna be? If we multiply A transpose, which is A transpose uh, comes from here, so transpose of this. So this cancelled out, and this uh, is uh, sigma 1 square, V transpose V, sigma 1 like this. And sigma 1 and sigma 1 inverse, one of them are cancelled, the one inverse left here, and uh, that's exactly what we are looking for. Isn't it? A dagger is a U times uh, inverse of sigma 1, and all others are zero, and U transpose are here. This is A there. So, if A has a full column length, you don't have to you don't have to find the singular values and U and V. All you have to do is just find the inverse of A transpose of A, and multiply it to the A transpose. That's uh, that's the whole idea. Okay. So now you uh, see if we have a, a matrix. Uh, that has a full column length, so all the columns are linear independent, then we can easily find the pseudo inverse of A to solve the, any kind of linear system of equations. If we uh, have a matrix uh, that has uh, what, linear dependent columns, then we may delete those linear dependent columns before we start. Okay. So here's the example. Find the pseudo inverse of A here. This is a 3 by 2 matrix, but as you see, these two columns are linear, in, linear independent. So it has a uh, column length 2, which is a full column length. So this, so the, we, this has a pseudo inverse, and we can easily find the pseudo inverse by what? This. this the, a, the A transpose A is this, so inverse of this is this, and just A transpose is this. So you just multiply these two to have what? The pseudo inverse. Pseudo inverse has the properties like this. A, A dagger, A is equal to A. A dagger, A, A dagger is equal to A dagger. And A dagger, dagger is A, A like this. If, if you, if we, so, you substitute uh, A inverse here, then you will see everything hold. So this is a general uh, form of the inverse of a given matrix. Yeah. The proofs are easy, and you can find the, this on the more Penrose pseudo inverse. There are all the properties and uh, the proofs that you can find. And this is not important. Just, you just uh, check it out, the general properties of the inverse. Here, here is the remark. Pseudo inverse provides a tool for solving a least square solution. It is known that the least square solution to the linear system AX is equal to B is a solution to the normal equation A transpose AX is equal to A transpose B. If A has a full column length, then just A transpose A is a non-singular matrix, so just multiply uh, the inverse of A transpose A times A transpose 2B, which is uh, A dagger, and pseudo inverse. So you just multiply pseudo inverse of A to B to find the least square solution X. This is it. This means if A has a full column length, the least square solution to AX equal B is just the, the pseudo, inverse of, uh, pseudo inverse of A times the vector B. That's it. So this is a generalization 
of the solar linear system in Kinshasa. Next, let A be an n by n matrix B, and B is a vector in Rn, then Ax is equal to A dagger B, B is the least square solution to Ax is equal to B that you have learned before. So this, this is the least square solution for Ax is equal to B. X is equal to A dagger B. The reason is here. Let A V a singular vertical composition with this sigma, and then A dagger is, uh, looks like this. Then from here, we can find A dagger B is, looks like this. If, you, if we multiply this on here, a, if we multiply A transpose A on here, then this can be simplified here and here, and which can be written in this way. Okay, here from here, this uh, sigma, the sigma one and sigma one inverse cancelled, so just one sigma one is left, which is uh, this, and this is exactly the A transpose of B here. It, this means X is exactly same as A dagger B. <coughs> that a, a, a dagger B uh, satisfies this. What this means is if you substitute this to here, then it satisfies this. This means this, uh, this is a least square solution of AX is equal to B. That's the whole idea. So when you find the solutions, then you, all you have to do is uh, find the gen pseudo inverse of A when it is not a square matrix and uh, uh, which has, uh, yeah, has a, whether it has a full, uh, full column length or not. With those, we can find this. The least square line, least square line passing through the four point, this four point. So we are looking for a line, least square line that, that passes through this four point. So from here, we can build a y, called, y is equal to mx plus b that uh, passes here. So we can set a linear system of equation like this. But from here, we, can, we, we know, we realize that actually there is no such a line that passes through those four points because they are not on the one line. Lines are here and there. So we are looking for a line which is most close to those four points. A line that the, the errors are most, the, 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 the errors are the least. So in order to so, we, uh, we can easily check with here, we can easily check this has a full column length. It's a column length, column length is two, which is the size of the columns. So, so as a full column length, so we can find a dagger like this, which is this can be easily find. Then uh, x is the just a dagger times b, which is this. This is the m and b here. Either uh, this b and m, b and m. So y is equal to uh, one x plus b, which is three over two. This is the equation. So this is the least square line. This is the way how to use it. Okay, before you found exact solutions. Now we are looking for the least square solution, even <coughs> when you do not have uh, solutions. Okay, here, if, uh, here. If you if you want to plot this graph, then you can draw the graph of it in here. Lines are, can be written in this way. If you change uh, the numbers, then you can uh, see the different lines. You can, find, you can draw the graph of quadratic functions. You can draw the graph of cubic functions. You can draw the graph of the, the power functions, trigonometric functions. And you can draw the graph of uh, secant functions, cotangent. You can draw the graph of the exponentials and log functions. All you have to do is just define a function here and then you will see the many things. Mm -hmm. You can draw the graph of it, and this, is the, this graph can be drawn in here. I think that's it for the singular vertical composition. Any questions?